Hello, everyone. What y'all doing? It's Ananda. I'm the Galactic Mystic. And it's a Leo full moon. Let's talk about it. How is everyone out there doing? We are having a ton, a ton of solar flares. The last time I looked, it was something like, I don't know, 10, 12, 13. Those do, of course, um, often trigger earthquakes. And I know we had a big one in China, I believe. Um so there's a lot of energy out there floating around. And of course, the sun rules Leo. So we've got a lot to talk about. <sighs> so there's a lot of big energy out there. How are you doing? Even if your life may be humming along smoothly, sometimes our inner world, our bodies hold a lot of this intensity for us. So this full moon in Leo is a major release valve of material from the past 15 years. Um, and this is connected to Pluto's second ingress into Aquarius, which just happened on the 20th, 21st. Now there will be a third and final ingress of Pluto into Aquarius in November. Um, Pluto is going to retrograde back into Capricorn in September for a final two month wrap up of the past 15 years, but we are in that wrap up now. We're in this push, a release of karmic, highly karmic material. And I know I say this often, been saying this a lot lately. It is important that we spend the time to close cycles as we open new ones. Sometimes we're closing and opening at the same time. These days, that's usually the case that we are opening a new cycle while we still have one foot in a cycle that is closing. And that is kind of the new normal, right? So we are beginning to feel into the collective and individual themes of the next 20 years. So let's take a look step-by-step step and find the threads of energy in this Leo full moon. Okay, my friends, this is our full moon chart. This is Leo full moon, January 25th, 2024 at 12.53 p.m. That is Eastern time. And here we have our sun moon opposition. The moon is at five degrees and 15 minutes of Leo opposing the sun at five degrees and 15 minutes of Aquarius and is conjunct Pluto. We have a lot of planetary geometry to talk about here. I am going to bring that back up in just a minute. So the Leo Aquarius axis is about giving and receiving. Leo is this on an intimate one-on-one -on -one level and Often themes of whether or not this giving and receiving is reciprocal become inflamed for better or worse during a Leo full moon. Leo full moons are dramatic. Aquarius is about giving and receiving in a universal way with groups of people or with society at large, beholding them or being beheld by them. And with the Sun-Pluto conjunction and ingress into Aquarius that I just talked about that happened on the 20th, 21st, this universal energy is big right now. And we may become aware of how interconnected the out there is with our world inside and how, you know, the world out there affects our inner capacity to give and receive at a personal level. For instance, if we are <laughs> struggling um, financially, that makes giving and receiving 
at both a personal and universal level challenging, right? So Pluto and Aquarius over the next 20 years is going to challenge everything in our world. And, and I know, I know this is a Leo full moon and I keep talking about Pluto and Aquarius, but this full moon is opposing Pluto. And this is just really one of the biggest energies happening right now. This is going to require that we upgrade how we treat each other and do it through a lens where it's got to benefit all of us, this giving and receiving. So those who are like stuck in old and crusty thought patterns, belief systems, um, they're going to have the hardest time, at least mentally, during this next 20 years. Um, the false structures of like resource control and, and distribution, giving and receiving at a universal level, will be taken on by Pluto relentlessly. And we will all do well to remember that friction creates opportunities for growth. And hopefully we welcome that challenge. <laughs> so a Leo full moon is a beautiful time to explore, for us to explore how we are allowing ourselves to be seen and be held. And how we are, whether or not we are seeing and beholding others. Now, I find it fun to consider that the sun does not question whether or not its light is being welcomed or received with gratitude. It simply shines consistently without condition. It's as if the sun knows, you know, we have sunglasses, we have sunblock, we have visors in our car, we have blinds on our windows. The sun allows us to be in control uh, with how much we receive of its light, how much is healthy for us to have. It doesn't try to do that for us. We can take that lesson on, right? <laughs> how much are we trying to control how we are being received by others, how we are being seen. Then we also have the moon who reflects this light in waxing and waning amounts. And it's worth noting that when we look at the sky and we see Venus, Mars, Jupiter, all of the visible planets, when we look up and we see those planets, what we are seeing is the sun's light reflecting off of them, just like the moon. So without judgment, see if you can tap into where you are in relation to this as a being who has light to shine that others can receive and reflect back to us through their own lens. While also remembering at all times that their lens is their own. And we don't necessarily have to take on management of that. So let me pull up this chart again and we'll start talking about some of this geometry. So this full moon is actually creating a T-square with Jupiter at six degrees of Taurus. Now this T-square is going to be a noticeable energy, a noticeable tension. Um, and if something is revealed in our lives, we would do well to take a moment, <clears throat> excuse me, before we respond. And the reason I say that is because whenever we have a square with Jupiter, our perception of things is is often skewed. We can overestimate the value or importance of something in that moment that it is that we first see it or first encounter it. And with a T-square, well, with this T-square in particular, there is a specific ask that we check to see our own accountability for whatever we are encountering. And also to stay connected to humor, respect, and boundaries. And the reason I say that is because the missing leg of this T-square that would create a balance of this tension is in Scorpio. 
in a healthy, <laughs> a healthy way to engage with Scorpio energy is humor, respect for others' boundaries. And, um, you know, that's just kind of always a nice thing, isn't it? The other way that Scorpio energy can help us here is um, a, a suggestion that we not necessarily show our cards right away to not reveal all of ourselves right away to sort of observe what is happening and maybe let it be a mess if it is. If it's a mess, let it be a mess for a minute and really take in the scene to see what is ours to clean up and what isn't. That accountability message is really strong with this. So can we let it be messy without needing to fix it right away? Um, if we can, that gives us a chance to dig into the heart of the matter, which Pluto likes. And as the co-ruler of Scorpio, that's a, a good dose of advice for um, if we encounter something that is surprising or revealed at this time. This full moon is also creating a finger of God with Venus and Capricorn and Saturn in Pisces. And this is another indication of um, a, a release valve of some sort. And we are supported beautifully by Venus and Saturn in a sextile. And the sextile has the energy of making sure that we stay in touch with our values. This energy, this helpful supportive energy tells us that when we are in connection with our own dignity, our sense of responsibility, um, valuing sort of the things that we know, the things that are tried and true rather than jumping off to another sort of shiny object kind of thing. That is helpful with whatever this full moon reveals as well. It's, an, it's another hint of not jumping into the frying pan uh, right away. Let people, let people, let the people in the situation show you who and what they are before jumping in. It's good advice. And finally, we have Mercury and Mars conjunct each other and conjunct the fixed star Vega in opposing Sirius, but they are both squaring the moon's nodes. Now this, this brings in some collective karma, some universal karma for humanity. This can bring in some inflammatory, inflammatory news during this lunar cycle. Um, it would be a good idea to be responsible with our media usage and what we are intaking. Um, it can <laughs> create an engine in, you know, in our mouths and our minds where things can fly out of our mouths before we mean them to. Um, so this is also an energy of standing our ground. Um, if somebody comes for you, this energy says, stand your ground. It doesn't necessarily mean attack or that we are in, you know, this is about not looking for trouble, but being dangerous if messed with, if you know what I mean, because there's also a potential for words to be tricky for people. Uh, I'm not going to. Well, yeah, for people or situations to be like um, engaging with smoke and mirror deflection or trickery. So again, it's not always what it looks like at first glance. This whole scenario is creating a powerful dynamic of drama, a release of dramatic situation, dramatic energy that we may want to just jump on and react and do and, or, you know, put ourselves in the middle of it right away. But the energy does not support us actually doing that. All of the messages here are 
to be cool, to stay calm, to assess the situation, to engage with as much maturity as you have access to within yourself. Um, because a lot of what this is, is a thread of karma that is so old, ancient. The storyline is so <sighs> interwoven into our beings that it's not even all about us. Yet here we are interacting with it. Um, Venus is conjunct Polaris Australis, our South Pole star. This is a star that helps us remember that we are not only are we all interconnected as humans, but that we are all interconnected with the entire cosmos. It asks us to remember that the carbon inside our bodies has been many, many things. That we are star material. We are connected to all that is at a physical level not just a woo-woo, spiritual, esoteric, galactic level. Our very physical material is ancient, holds lots of wisdom that our human brains can't comprehend, and is, in essence, immortal physically as well. Saturn is still conjunct our fixed royal star Fomalo has been for a long time. That is a highly beneficial energy, a beautiful support of, hey, in the midst of all this chaos, we are all doing better if we can be a good parent to our inner child and take our spiritual path seriously and spiritual path can look like a lot of different things it does not have to look like burning incense and you know meditating in a traditional way all of that is not necessarily what spirituality has to be you do your version of it picking up trash can be spiritual you know what i'm saying the other thing to remember is that Uranus is going to station direct. I think it's on the 27th and Uranus stationing direct <laughs> usually um, has some drama of its own. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. That happening within two days of this full moon it's another indication that there's drama afoot. There's drama afoot. But you know what? What's new? Uranus brings shockwaves in one way or another. So um, a good thing to remember is to take good care of our nervous systems during this time. Get as much sleep as you can or as is possible and reasonable for you in your life. Let's give ourselves extra time if we can when we're moving out into the out in the world and interacting with others. And let's, as much as we can, stay aware of our surroundings so that we have the time to think before we react to whatever we are seeing, whatever we are experiencing. This full moon is also out of bounds, which tells us that it is not necessarily going to act like a normal full moon. It has it is following other rules. It's not following the rules that we give to the moon um, under these circumstances. So we have access to the extraordinary for better or worse. And we have all of these points of guidance telling us how we can interact with this energy um, in, a, in a good way. Just a kind of side note, it's interesting to me that we have the two Black Moon Liliths conjunct each other. Um, true Black Moon Lilith are oscillating and mean Black Moon Lilith, both at 12 degrees of Virgo. This 
doesn't happen um, very often. Oscillating uh, Black Moon Lilith is wild and bounces all over the place um, around mean Black Moon Lilith. Kind of, this is a side note. Uh, this energy is really telling us that this full moon carries the potential of a deeper synthesis of shadow than we may realize at first. That energy of how, of what we edit within ourselves and what we are just is never going to be edited no matter how hard we try. Those two energies are friends for this full moon. And I really like that, especially considering what I was saying in the beginning about the sun doesn't give two thoughts about how you are receiving its light rays. It's just giving them to you anyway. And it is trusting you enough to do what you need to do to manage how much light you are receiving. So we get to do that too. We don't have to be responsible for how everyone is perceiving us. It's none of our business anyway. Taking a moment just to kind of look at some of these parallels and contra parallels. Um, there is an energy of power dynamics being at play. So we want to really make sure that we're being responsible with our own energy and not trying to um, not trying to invade other people with our energy. And that can look like a lot of things. Um, there is a potential for a lot of rabbit holes to open up and for us to dive in head first, which is fine to do. Just make sure you've got somebody holding the rope on the other end, drop an anchor, make sure you have a footing that makes it easier for you to climb out of that rabbit hole. Um, we also have access to a beautiful energy that helps us make new choices because we have grown and healed so much. Choices that we didn't have access to before, now we have access to because uh, we have the ability to create those, those opportunities for ourselves and to recognize them, which maybe we couldn't do before. Let's watch for pushing our beliefs on others. And let's watch for taking on the beliefs of others simply because they sound convincing and powerful. Hmm, that's a good one. And romance is in the air. Interesting. But not surface level romance. This is not the time for to fool with... Um, casual connections unless you are doing that with great awareness and consciousness um we can create a lot of karma for ourselves right now with what we do in romantic relationships so just remember that um nothing there's nothing wrong with being casual that's a fine thing to be but being casual and engaging in smoke and mirrors trickery or manipulation that's what we don't want to don't want to be doing because that uh return energy is moving real fast right now that's just gonna come right back at you so um that's what i've got for you guys happy full moon let me know how you are i know this is kind of a, a speed talking video um it's one of those busy days all my love to you let me know how you're doing how you are managing your nervous systems in this powerful energy and you know like for for a lot of us we've been that new normal of the amped up energy we've been riding with that for a long time so i bet a lot of you this is just old hat just feeling like another day in the office much love gorgeous souls galactic beings talk to you soon